Welcome back! This video is on the SELECT component, which is an interaction component provided by the Advanced Framework Core 4.0 and 4.1. Yes, this tutorial is applicable to both versions. Actually, the Advanced Framework Core provides a whole set of SELECT components. Let me give you a short overview. The COMP SELECT is the parent component of all SELECT components and consolidates the main logic as well as the event dispatchers. The COMP SELECT COMP expands the SELECT components logic by the ability to find other components, especially state components, by tag and transmit the SELECT signal to them. The COMP SELECT selection menu upgrades the COMP SELECT by spawning a menu of buttons which allow you to summarize a variety of player choices into one customizable menu. In this video, I will content myself with the parent component and show you a few examples of how you can use it to set up custom SELECT interactions. I already prepared this actor with some functions and two meshes, so we only need to add the comp select to create our examples. One of the nice things of interaction components is that they come with a number of individual event dispatches, which we will use to implement our custom interaction. This is the intended use of the comp select, by the way. Let's have a look at the event dispatchers first. Here we have three custom events, pressed select, released select and highlight select. The other two come with every component in Unreal. That does not mean you cannot use them, but they are of secondary interest right now. For the first example, let's use the pressed select event. It toggles whenever the key assigned to the select function is pressed. Now for our first example, we want our actor to turn left by a given angle whenever the select is toggled. I prepared a function for the turning and a variable to set the rotation angle, so we just need to connect it to the event and set a value for the rotation angle. Before we try it, let's have a look at the settings too. Most of them are on the select component under settings. Here you can find the enabled boolean, which you can use to temporarily enable or disable the component the identifier, which is used for complex triggers, and more interesting for us right now, the component tag to select array and the supported select sources array. The supported select sources array defines which input methods are accepted by this select component. We can choose between any of three options, but we have to choose at least one. As long as this array is empty, the select component won't function properly. Let's have a look at our options. Screen enables the select component to accept input from all screen type pawns, which include the desktop pawn and the mobile pawn. Laser allows input from the laser motion component and the motion controllers used in VR. And finger prepares the select component for interaction with the finger motion component. We can theoretically allow all three select sources or any group of two or only one. And that's what I am going to opt for by choosing screen as only select source. Let's deal with the component tag to select array next. It enables us to choose which of the two static meshes of the actor we want to make selectable. Right now it's set to none, which actually means that all meshes are selectable. For example's sake, let's set it to mesh and enter the tag to the plant mesh only. Now we are ready to try our example. As you can see, only the plant mesh is selectable by the desktop pawn, and the VR pawn's laser has no effect at all. Maybe you noticed the additional info we get with the select pressed event. Let me set up one new one so we can have a look. Here we get the pawn, the source actor, the impact location and the impact component. Let's use some of that information. We could, for example, set up an actor that rotates to the left when selected by the left motion controller in VR and to the right when selected by the right motion controller. How would we do that? First, let's go to the settings and set the support select source to laser so we can have input from a motion controller. For now, we are done here, so to the event. Now, let's think a bit about the information we get here. Impact location and component won't help us, they are on the actor. We could of course use the pawn information, but for this specific case the source actor is most useful. Let me explain that shortly. If we are in desktop or mobile environment, the source actor does not actually give us any additional information. It's the pawn. But we already decided this would be a VR example, so what does that change? In VR, the select 
controller function is transmitted from the pawn to the motion controller and from there to the motion components including the laser motion component which will toggle the select. Consequently here the source actor is no longer the pawn but the MCOMP laser on the motion controller. So how can we use that? Well first let's cast the source actor to the motion component. From there we can actually get the corresponding motion controller which has a handy enum which tells us which hand it was spawned for. Now we just need to add a switch on enum and the function I prepared. Ready, let's have a look at the result. Let me end this video by reminding you that the comp select is not the only select co interaction component the advanced framework core provides. There are two more child components which make the interaction even more accessible and which we will be covering in the next videos. Also, please have a look at the introduction video on interaction components if you want to know about setting up highlighting and sounds. It's pretty much the same process for all interaction components, so I covered it there. For now, bye bye and see you in the next video.